Good morning, Jack to Nerdy fans. Jeremy here with my full non-spoiler review for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Before I jump into that review, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you guys never miss out on a video. And if you do enjoy our content, please make sure you give these videos a thumbs up. It doesn't cost you a thing, and it is the biggest metric that YouTube used to promote our videos. So the more thumbs up we get, the more that YouTube will promote our videos to other users. So please hit that thumbs up. As I said, it doesn't cost you a thing. Now, with that out of the way, let's jump into it. So uh, I'm going to give away my age a little bit here. Uh, growing up as a child, I used to love watching the old Mission Impossible uh, TV series. I always, I was always mesmerized by the gadgets and gizmos and how they would just come up with these really elaborate plans. Um, you know, and, well, these you know, almost these uh, fantastic teams of people and these elaborate plans to complete the impossible mission. Um, so growing up as a child, I absolutely loved the TV shows. Uh, I remember going to, to the very first Mission Impossible movie with Tom Cruise um, with my father back in the day. Um, so we, you know, we, you know, I have a deep connection to the franchise there. Uh, I'll go admit, I haven't been a huge fan of the last several films. I think I found they've been lacking a little bit. Um, but uh, I thought, hey, look, let's go and check out this this Dead Reckoning. It's a two-parter. Um, you know, it's supposed to be quite uh, quite elaborate and everything. Uh, so I, I, thought I was, you know, I had I had very high expectations for this film going into it. And I have to, it's, um, if you saw my uh, out of the theater reaction that I posted up a couple of days ago, I did go to a very late session. So I didn't get out of the cinema until, you know, 12.30 in the morning. Um, so I was pretty tired by the end of it. But even though I was tired, I still very much enjoyed this film. Um, you know, it's it's got everything that you've come to really expect from a Mission Impossible film. You know, there's deep-seated espionage. There's, uh, you know, lots of action. Uh, you know, um, lots of fight scenes, lots of technical stuff. Um, you know, I, I, I found I found it to be very, very enjoyable, and it did stick very close to the, I suppose, the the tropes of what Mission Impossible has come to be. Um, one of my critiques on the film is that, you know, as I mentioned right at the beginning, uh, I love all the gadgets and gizmos and technology that they use um, with these sorts of things. I did find that in this film, though, they didn't use a lot of, of that sort of stuff. Um, very, very minimal, actually. You know, uh, there's probably only maybe two or three you know, pieces of tech that they use throughout the whole film. The rest of it is just your standard action type um, stuff, you know, hand to hand combat, car chases, things like that. So the tech, the, the tech side of things was a little bit lacking in this, I felt. Um, that being said, you know, they made up for it in other ways. Um, the the uh, the premise of the film, the overall premise of what they are trying to, um, what they are trying to achieve, what are they, they are trying to prevent, like the the actual overall threat um, that they are trying to um, eliminate or minim minimize or what have you, uh, I, f I find very very intriguing, especially in the day and age that we're in. Uh, I don't as again, this is a non spoiler review, so I'm not going to give anything really away. Um, uh, so you know, but like the you know the I suppose the 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 threat that they are trying to minimize or neutralize is very. Um, as I said, kind of applicable to today's society. So definitely, I, I think they did a really good job there. Um, the casting, as always, is as you know, pretty good. I, even though I'm not the biggest Tom Cruise fan, I do enjoy him in these roles as Ethan Hunt. 
Um, Hayley Atwell coming into the fold now, as you know, we all know her as uh, Agent Carter uh, from um, Captain America. Um, you know, very beautiful woman. Uh, she did a fantastic job. Uh, we've got returning actress Rebecca Ferguson, who I think is fantastic, and, and she did a really great job. Uh, we've got Vanessa uh, Kirby, who came in, uh, who is, who's lovely and beautiful and does a fantastic job. I was particularly um, intrigued by a uh, newcomer, uh, now I hope I'm not going to butcher her name, but Pom Clementoff. Um, she plays the number two, uh, I suppose, to the main antagonist. Um, uh absolutely gorgeous brilliant physicality in the in the um fight scenes very elusive and intriguing she did a fantastic job so um i'll go give a big big shout out to pom clementoff for her role um uh now uh the um also newcomer to the thing uh esari morales i hope i'm pronouncing his name correct fantastic actor i've seen him in many 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 things um yeah, you know, I thought he was brilliant. He was in Titans as De uh, Deathstroke, uh, the TV series Titans, uh, and and played Deathstroke, which I think he did a fantastic job of. He's a very versatile actor, and I think he did a fantastic job. And then obviously we've got returning, um, you know, actors uh, Simon Pegg and uh, uh, Ving Rhames, um, who I absolutely love. Like, I mean, Ving has been involved since, you know, I think he was in the very first movie. Um, if not, yeah, no, he was. He was in the very first movie and has continued all the way through. Absolutely love him as an actor and to love his character as Luther. Um, and again, Simon Pegg as Benji. Lo love Simon Pegg as well. So, fantastic cast. Could not fault the casting one little bit. I think they were all, all fantastic in their roles. Did a fantastic job. Um, so the casting can't can't. Def, you know, can't um, say a negative thing about the cast at all. Um, as I said, you know, look, the, the the overall premise of the film and 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 everything I found to be fantastic. The scripting, as always, is really really good. Um, cinematography, you know, the cinematography and the use of uh, cityscapes and 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 what have you is absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, there's a a um, a decent portion of this movie is set in uh venice and the way that they use the cityscapes and the laneways and and all of that um was absolutely fantastic you know um you know when they're out in the countryside type settings they have big expansive vast you know um views of the countryside which is you know fantastic like they really really did do a fantastic job with the cinematography as well of this film so look, all in all, I have very little, very few gripes about this film. Like I said, one of the things I had I thought of was, you know, they didn't have the techie techie side of things as much. Hopefully, there'll be more of that in the uh, part two um, of of the film um, because I think that plays a very very big part of the franchise. It's a bit, it's, it's a bit like having a James Bond movie without an Aston Martin, you know, like. Yeah, you can't have a Mission Impossible without some gadgets and gizmos, in my opinion. Um, so hopefully they'll rectify that a little bit in the second one. Um, you know, uh, the, I mean, there are a few character moments where I, th I kind of thought, oh, you know, they've pushed this character a little bit too far, or they, you know, um, you know I would have reined things back a little bit. You know, but I mean, like I said, it's all very minimal in the in the grand scheme of things. Um, I'd be very interested to know what our jacked and nerdy audience think of this film. At the moment on IMDb, it's got an 8.2 out of 10, um, which I think is a very, very reasonable score, actually. I, I would probably go with a, uh, an 8 out of 10 or a 7.5 7 to 8 out of 10. Um, Rotten Tomatoes, it's got a 98% at the moment. Um, I think I saw a couple of days ago, uh, it had something like 50-something reviews, and it was 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Obviously, it's come down a little bit um, since then, but, I mean, 98 is still a fantastic score. So, um, look, 
I, th- I think they've done a fantastic job with this film. Like I said, um, I, I enjoyed it very much. I'll, I'll probably watch it again. Um, not at the cinemas. I will probably wait till it's available on streaming. Uh, but I will definitely sit down and watch it again. Uh, and I'll, I'll probably def. I'll, uh, what I'll do is because I think part two comes out next year, so I'll definitely sit down and watch it again uh, before I see part two, just to refresh myself. Um, so then I could go straight into to part two and uh, just continue the story. But hit me up in the comments section below. Let me know what you guys think of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, what were your thoughts on the casting and, and the story? I'd be very interested to know what everyone else thinks. So hit me up in the comments section below. I do read the comments. Um, and as I said, you know, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Uh, we've got lots more content coming up next week. We've got both Oppenheimer and Barbie coming out in cinemas. I'm really excited to see Oppenheimer. It does look like a fantastic film. So I'll be reviewing both of those movies though, Oppenheimer and Barbie. Um, the week after that, we've, uh, here in Australia, we got Sisu hitting the cinemas. So I'll be reviewing that as well. Um, Mrs. Jack the Nerdy has some mystery boxes coming up as well. I know you guys like those videos. And uh, we've got lots of Hot Toys uh, uh, unboxing videos coming up as well. So make sure you keep an eye out for those. Better yet, hit that subscribe button. That way you guys get notified when those videos go up. And uh, what we'll do is we'll catch you in the next video. But So until then, stay jacked and stay nerdy.